Well, good Wednesday morning. Oh, it's hump day. We're halfway through the week. Yay. <laughs> we are on Psalm 108, and we have a much shorter one this morning. And it's actually uh, two previous psalms put together. And this one is um, put together by David, we know. Not exactly sure um, when he did this or um, what the purpose was of putting it together in a uh, using these two psalms, but um, as one commentator said, you can use some old psalms for new situations when the theology is solid and um, it is this morning. So, we're in Psalm 108, verse 1. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations. For your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. Now rescue your beloved people. Answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by his holiness. I will divide up Shechem with joy. I will measure out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh too. Ephraim, my helmet, will produce my warriors, and Judah, my scepter, will produce my kings. But Moab, my wash basin, will become my servant, and I will wipe my feet on Edom and shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring me victory over Edom? Have you rejected us, O God? Will you no longer march with your armies? Oh, please help us against our enemies, for all human help is useless. With God's help, we will do mighty things, for he will triumph, trample down our foes. So again, they, some of those might sound a little familiar. Um, verses 1 through 5 actually come from Psalm 57, 7 through 11. David had pulled these verses out of an earlier hymn and an earlier, or an earlier psalm in an earlier situation. But it's interesting how he starts it off. My, my heart is confident in you, O Lord. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. There has, all through the story of David's life, there's just this confident, uh, this confidence that David has that God is always going to come through that God is God and, and he's going to take care of situations. And so he says, I, can, I will wake the dawn with my song. Um, he's so excited uh, about what God has done, is going to do, uh, his confidence. He's waking up the day. It's not the sunrise that's waking him up, but rather he's up early in the morning uh, praising God and, and singing uh, in, for joy. Um, your unfailing love, that phrase just is throughout the Psalms, God's unfailing love. And David says it reaches, uh, it's higher than the heavens and your faithfulness reaches into the clouds. It's just the unfailing love and faithfulness of God just is so, so high, so deep, so, so big, um, David just is amazed by it. He, he just can't, he's using the expanses of the universe, so to speak, just to try to describe um, the love and the faithfulness of God. And then it's, Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens, and may your glory shine over the earth. Would God be exalted into all of his creation? Would he, would even the highest heaven, would he just be exalted? He is the king of kings, and 
and, and worthy of that position. And with his glory, with his goodness, with his righteousness, with his everything about him, just cover the whole earth. Um, big prayer, big proclamations from David this morning. And then he kind of changes gears a little bit. Um, <clears throat> he's back to uh, the rest of the ver remaining verses, verses 6 through 13, actually come from Psalm 60, uh, verses 5 through 12. And so now he's saying, rescue your beloved people, answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by his holiness. Whatever the situation is, uh, David is reminding God that um, he needs to rescue. Yeah, it's dependent on him. Answer and save us by your power. And not just save us, but save your beloved people. It's like David... <clears throat> is reminding God, these are your beloved people. This is your promise to, to, um, to take care of us. So um, please do it and do it soon. And then he just, he talks about some of the foreign lands. He's going to divide up Shechem, Mezer, Succoth, Gilead is mine, Manasseh too, Ephraim. Um, these are his, the lands are going to be divided up between uh, amongst the Jewish people. God is going to give these. This is the promise. So um, Ephraim <clears throat> will be a helmet. He'll produce warriors. Judah, my scepter, will produce the kings. These are lands and cities that are going to become um, the nation of Israel's uh, because God is going to give his people victory over the people there. And so that's kind of the the prediction that God has made or the promise and David is just kind of reminding uh, God that this is what needs to happen. And then of his enemies, Moab, Moab will be my wash basin and I will wipe my feet on Edom and shout in triumph over Philistia. So um, Moab and Edom are just constant enemies of Israel. And David said, someday it's going to be like they're just a wash base and I clean my dirty hands or my dirty feet in, in this, this group. This, and Edom, I'm just going to wipe my feet. I'm going to clean my feet off. And Philistia, that's the Philistines. <clears throat> David's going to shout for joy. All the people will. These are just kind of the nations that are just always picking on and attacking. Israel throughout history. But David's saying someday our enemies will be underneath our feet, so to speak. And then he just kind of asks one of those um, uh, questions of who, who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring me victory over, over Edom? It's kind of a rhetorical question. He knows who it is, but he wants the people to who who's going to do this for us? Have you rejected us, God? Will, will you no longer march with our armies? There's been, whatever the situation is, the victories haven't been coming maybe as fast as David thinks they should or haven't been work, things haven't been working out the way David thinks they should. So has God forgotten us? Isn't God marching with us anymore? <clears throat> but he goes on, Oh, please help us against our enemies. Please help us against our enemies. And this is the next line that I, that just jumped out at me and I wished we would all get our minds wrapped around. For all human help is useless. David could have found neighboring armies or neighboring friends or he could have gotten his people together and come up with some plan. But he's saying, in this case, all human help is useless. We need God's hand to intervene here. And if we as a people could learn that today, if we could learn that our, whatever you want to call your enemies, whatever political party, whatever power structure, whatever it is, that whatever that enemy is, if we could learn that we need God's help against whatever's going on today, it's not the human help. Uh, 
because we humans are just as selfish and self-centered on one side of the aisle as we are on the other. If we would just bow a knee and pray like David is and cry out to God, would you please help us and trust in him? Uh, with God's help, we will do mighty things. With God's help, not with our power, not with our strength, not with our vote, not with our new laws, but with God's help, we will do mighty things for he will trample down our foes. Um, that's the challenge that I got out of this this morning for us today. And David was writing hundreds of thousands of years ago, and yet today these truths are still challenging to me this morning. Where am I going for my help? Who am I trusting in? Who, what do we need to change things? And it takes me back to the first verse, and I guess it would be more of a question for all of us today. My heart is confident in you, O oh God. Is it? Are we confident that God knows what's going on? That God knows who or what the enemies are? And that if we would cry out for God's help, He will take care of our enemies. He will make our enemies like a wash basin and a place that we can wipe our feet with God's help. And I think that's the challenge to us all today with everything that's going on. Can we put our hope and our trust and our faith in God? Father, would that be true for us today? The realities of the world, uh, we're in a mess. The realities are we've pushed you away and we've tried to do things in our own human way. Uh, we think we know all the answers. We think we know how to fix everything. Uh, we think power, uh, whichever, whoever has it. Um, but David is giving us a challenge this morning. Are we confident in our God? Can we trust in you to, to give us victory? Can we acknowledge our dependence, our need for you to fix our country, our situations, whatever they might be? Father, help us to wrestle with that today as we go about our, our daily lives, our daily business. Are we confident in you in spite of everything that we see today? And would, if so, would we humble ourselves and cry out for your help? Father, thank you for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. Would we walk in that today in Jesus' name? Amen. All right, good to see you, Gail and Steve and PJ and Sherry. Thanks for hopping on this morning. Um, this was Wednesday, and Wednesday was supposed to be Lent, and I missed it. So, I will be back tomorrow with Lent. I was working late last night on my newsletter and I just grabbed things this morning and thought, oh, I gotta get the Psalms done. I'll be back tomorrow with our Lent study. Um, so have a great day, you guys. Um, have confidence today in your God. Bye-bye.